Hi, and welcome to this section on advanced programming. In the last section, we had a look at basic structuring of scripts, and in this section we will discuss advanced topics like how to write advanced functions, how to write functions for pipelines, how to add parameter validation, and how to add automated testing of our scripts using the PESTER framework. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with advanced functions. Advanced functions are a powerful concept in PowerShell that you can leverage in many circumstances writing your scripts. In this video we are going to take a look at using the commandlet binding for functions, various aspects around defining the parameters of functions, and finally we will enable the what if and confirm parameter switches to functions to protect critical scripts. Before we start writing scripts, let's have a recap at our case study, the REST-based API for which we are creating a PowerShell library. Remember that we are dealing with zone records. Create, update, list and delete. And that we also need to handle access tokens for the API. I have added the file dnsimpleps.ps1, where I have scaffolded functions that we will implement gradually. I plan to use the dot sourcing strategy for now for testing and running our scripts. So let's get started. Now these are the functions that we are going to implement. I have paired a snippet with the actual code doing the work. So basically what this code does is that it first creates custom object and it then creates JSON string from it. And that constitutes the body of the post request that we are going to post later on to the API. And also we are constructing a, a URI based on the account and on the zone for which we wanted to add a record. Then we use the invoke rest method commandlet. We also set the authorization header with the access token. We set the content type to JSON and then the result back. We pipe to select object and then expand the property data on the object coming back. So what we need to do first here is to handle all the inputs that the function requires. What we did before in this uh, course is that we added the parameters after function name like so. And then we had the function body. But what we'll do now is uh, we're going to do this a little bit different. First, we're going to add an attribute called the command let binding, which basically tells PowerShell to treat the function like it treats a commandlet. So there is the commandlet uh, attribute, and then there is a keyword param, and then we list our parameters. Let's just do like this, and then we can lose this one. So this is our new syntax. One of the things that happens when we add the commandlet binding is that the, any undeclared arguments that are passed to a function when calling it will be will create an error. And also there is no implicit positioning of the parameters, so we have to declare that later. But one other thing to notice about the commandlet binding is that uh, commandlets in PowerShell have a very strict naming convention where they follow verb-noun convention. So uh, let's just go ahead and rename the functions right away. So we need to have a dash here. There's the verb add and the noun sound record. Uh, let's do the same for all the functions. So like that. And now we are pretty much ready, I guess, uh, with our function. One thing to notice is that the an advanced function has a syntax that is a little more how should I put it, more explicit or more verbose than a simple function. So it has an, uh, a begin block, which is called before the execution of the function. And that's the basically used for initialization. And then there's the process block, which is where the actually the work happens. And let's go ahead and close that. And then finally, there's the end block which is called after the body execution or execution of the function body rather and it's typically used for cleaning up so but for our purposes let's just uh, write a debug message uh, over here add uh, sound record end for instance let's copy that and have another one in the begin so there we go 
I think we're pretty much ready to try and run our code. Let's go back to the command line. I'll dot source the file. And also I need the debug preferences to continue so that we get uh, debug messages. So now I'm pretty much ready to, to call my function. Salt equals add zone. Now, what I'm going to do here, testing this function, is that, that I'm going to create a, a special DNS record type called a, a URL record. Record type URL, which allows me to specify a URL to be called. So basically what I do here is I create a simple URL shortener where I have a DNS record pointing to a URL. So first I can uh, name, the, name the record. Let's say I can... And the content should be ICANN.org, for instance. And the zone parameter is the DNS zone where I want to add the, the record. I have a special domain here, powershell.io, for which I want to have this record. And then I need to put in my DNSimple account. And finally, I need the access token. and for that, I have to go to the web page. So here I'm logged into my account. Select access tokens on the left menu here. And then I need to have a token generated. Posh recipes, for instance. Let's just give it a name. I'll copy it to the clipboard. And so let's pass it into the function. And off we go. So there, we got our debug messages. Uh, first, it called the begin uh, block. Then we can see that it called this URL here, this payload, and then it called the end block. So let's go and see if the record works. Then I should be able to enter ican.powershell.io and have it redirected to the real web page. Good. Let's head back here, clear the screen. Now, let's try and check the boundaries or, of this method uh, or this function, for instance. Let's try and run it without the parameters. So what happened here was what the, what the, the function started, but it didn't have all the parameters it needed, so the rest method called failed. So let's go and help that by being a little more explicit about the parameters. What we can do here is that we can uh, name the parameters that are mandatory. And for that I use the parameters attribute and the keyword mandatory. So let's just add that to all parameters. One more now, we should be done. So all the parameters are mandatory. One other thing that I can create here is I explicit about the parameters position. So for instance, uh, I can say position zero and position one, position two, and position Three. Okay, let's go back, clear the screen to dot source the file again. Remember to do that. And then if I call this function now, uh, the script will tell me right away. Um, I did a mistake here. It's parameters, plural. It should be singular, of course. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. And now it actually prompt me, uh, prompts me for the missing parameters. And this is the behavior that I want. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, what I can do also here now, uh, when I added the uh, positioning of the parameters, I should be able to uh, write this like so. Result equals add zone record. So the zone is the first one, powershell.io, uh, the record type URL, the name, ICANN2, the content, HTTP, 
I can dot org and we didn't have a position for the account, so I need to be explicit about that. And so on. It's it's missing the ask access token and that's fine. Uh but uh, the idea is that we can use positioning for the parameters. So let's go ahead and implement the other functions here. So the remove again. Let's add the mount let's binding. Like that. So here we are able to uh, actually remove the zone record. Let's go back. Dot source the file again, and we can remove zone record. So, but basically, removing the record is kind of a critical task. So we need uh, we should be able to make the user really be certain about uh, whether this operation is going to be handled and for that we can add on to the commandlet binding attribute we can set supports uh, should process equals true if i can type it true and so basically here we can wrap the critical information here in the critical section we can uh, wrap it in an if statement so we say if and there's a special uh, global uh, object or variable ps command let if it should process and then we can give it uh, a description of what is about to happen with id id in zone zone so if that's true then we invoke the web request so let's see now and let's try and see if we can balance the brackets here and i think we are good so um what this also allows us to do is that i can add okay so instance so for instance if i am um, a zone power shell.io ID blah 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 account access token something. I can use the uh, what if switch, and in this time it will actually never happen, but it will tell you what it would do if this function uh, is running. So what if performing the operation remove zone record on target record with ID 1111 in zone powershell.io. So this allows me to test what the script is about to do without actually uh, not performing the operation. And also instead of what if I can ask PowerShell to make the user confirm the operation. And again, now PowerShell will actually prompt me if this is really something I want to do. And I, of course, have the chance to say no. So let's move on to the next method to or function to implement. So here we are uh, retrieving existing zone records. So there's quite a lot of code here. Let's just uh, go ahead and try and run it. And will source the file again. So get zone record uh, for the powershell.io. I can say I want to have the URL records for the account. 28 access token. Let's go and see if we can token once again. So like that. So basically what we did here, we retrieved the zone records uh, of the type URL from this uh, zone over here. And here's our record that we created earlier. It has an ID, the zone ID, the content, the time to live, uh, and so on. So, but let's have a look at the API. 
So basically what we implemented here is a uh, list of records for a zone. Uh, but also there's a query you can make for a certain zone record based on the, the record ID. So let's go ahead and change our latest function so that it can handle both cases, either listing of records or getting a certain record. So let's go and have a look at the code. So here's the existing function. So here we have like three parameters, record type name or name like, uh, which is associated with uh, the existing call. And I could add a parameter called ID. So what I need power to tell PowerShell now is that either I should have one of these parameters or I should have the ID parameter. And in order to implement that, I can use something called a parameter set. So for the for these three here, I can say that these belong to a parameter set. Parameter set name. Let's give it a name list records, for instance. And this one I can uh, create another set for, like by ID. Three records by ID. So also, if I move up here to the commandlet binding, I could say which of the parameter sets should be the default. So default parameter set name equals. So let's make it a list records. Like that. So now I can move down here to the body. Uh, I could say if let's use the ps commandlet object again um so if ps commandlet dot parameter parameter set name equals list records then do this let's clean it up a bit so good Else, and then the URI should be somewhat different. So, okay, let's copy this one and over here we need to add the ID of the record and then we are done, I think. So let's add a, a little debug message here, right? Debug parameter set name is ps commandlet parameter set name. Well, let's just remember this one. So let's try the first one. Again, the parameter set name is list records. Let's try and tweak this. So, and then the parameter set name is by ID, and we call the URL where we have the ID at the end, and here's our record. Good. In this video, we had a look at advanced functions where we used the commandlet binding to make our functions behave like commandlets. We annotated parameters with attributes to tailor script behavior. And we protected critical scripts with enabling the what if and confirm parameter switches.